Welcome to the City Current Show. I'm your host, Jeremy Park. We're always honored to bring you inspiring stories of individuals and organizations making a difference, empowering the good in our community. And we definitely love the efforts of Meriton. They do so much good here in the Mid-South and beyond. We are honored to be joined by our good friend, Melanie Keller. She's the president and CEO of Meriton. How are you doing, Melanie? I'm doing great. Happy New Year, Jeremy. Here's to a wonderful 2022. Absolutely. So we are still early on, which means that uh, we have a lot to look forward to with the new year ahead. But let's start out. Give us a little bit of history. When you talk about Meriton and your efforts, give us a little bit of history for the organization. Well, we uh, celebrated last year 60 years of service to the community. Uh, We started here in Memphis, Tennessee, and have expanded to cover a four state area, including Mississippi, Georgia, and um, Arkansas. Uh, We uh, started uh, focused mainly on seniors, and we have expanded that to really encompass all vulnerable populations, um, children receiving foster care, people living with uh, the effects of disabilities and aging, as well as our older population. Yeah, I mean, you do so much. And so let's take them in threads and we'll kind of touch on each one. And then we have some very important uh, conversations around access that we'll talk about as well. But Let's start with home health. Give us a little bit of a deep dive on the home health side. Absolutely. So our home health program is skilled services. And when I say skilled services, that means someone that's having an acute episode of health care exacerbations that may need a skilled nurse, a registered nurse or an LPN to come out, a physical therapy, occupational speech therapy. A great example, my, my mother recently had a broken shoulder and she's getting home health physical therapy to get that range of motion back so she can do more for herself and I can do a little less. So um, that's the the general premise behind home health. And then under our home health services and our clinical services, we also expand those services to do things like provide uh, COVID vaccines and to do things like provide uh, medical intervention and care for victims of elder. Before we talk about the vaccines, what does the range look like? Because when you're talking about taking care of someone and going into the home, is it short-term, long-term, both? What, what's, what's the time frame in terms of kind of stepping in and managing someone and kind of getting them good back to health, but also to, or back to good health, but also to kind of a longer duration? So what does that look like on your end? Uh, well, the, the great thing is we, we can do both types of services through, through different programs. So the skilled home health is that acute episode of care. You have a new diagnosis. Um, you just got out of the hospital because you've had surgery or problems with your blood sugar. So that's usually a short term, you know, a couple of months of that real intense nursing care or therapy care. You need to get back on your feet. Then you have that long term piece. And the long term piece is where our home and community based services programs come in. And we have those services through Choices, which is through TenCare. It can be through private insurance. It can be through a variety of different programs that VA funded, for example. And that's that long-term care. That's that ongoing, what we call non-skilled care in the home. That's um, uh, companion care. That's that's making meals. That's doing laundry. That's personal care, helping with showers. That 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 maintenance piece. That convalescent care piece that keeps someone staying in their home for for the the long term. So the short term is your skilled home health, your nurses and your therapists, and your long term are your home and community-based services. And we actually offer both. So we kind of cover that range. (laughs) Nice. Talk about the access to the vaccine. This is something that um, you early on, you were kind of an innovator in the sense that, hey, we've got access points let's use them and let's really help. And so talk about what you're doing with the vaccines and around access. Well, uh, we were the first to uh, do this in the state of Tennessee and I think maybe the second state in the country to do this. And so again, we work with that vulnerable population of seniors. We, we know that there are a lot that are homebound because of, of medical conditions, whether that's that they don't need to be around a lot of people because they have a lot of different disease processes going on, Functionally, they're bed bound. It takes an ambulance to get them somewhere. It's a real taxing effort to get them from point A to point B. And we were really concerned that that was a group of people that were being missed by the the big pop-up vaccination sites. Those are great if you can sit for two or three hours in a vehicle, if you have someone to get you there. 
you know, if you have ambulance transportation to get you from the bed. So um, we worked and secured grant funding. And so we actually covered four counties for this, Shelby, Tipton, Fayette, and Lauderdale. And we send a nurse to the home to give the COVID vaccines. We've done uh, Moderna, we've done Johnson & Johnson, we're, we're doing boosters, we're still doing first shots if someone's never had one. And then we also added flu vaccines. So I think the important piece of this is that it's not um, concierge care. It's not, well, you know, I'd rather just stay at home and not go to Walgreens or Walmart or my doctor, but really the people that are at higher risk are just aren't able to get out because of um, because of health is issues, because of disability. And so we come to those people and we provide that vaccine. And, you know, it's funny because people go, well, they're homebound. So what difference does it make? Do they really need to be vaccinated? Well, homebound doesn't mean 100% shut in. So unless you're completely living in a bubble where people just drop off the stuff on your porch and you never interact with people, then you still have the potential to become infected with, uh, with COVID-19. So that's been really important to us. So again, that's four counties and people can reach out. They can email us at vaccine at meriton.org. They can call us. That number is 901-612-2122. So there are a variety of different ways people can reach out to us for, for those vulnerable uh, adults that, that need the vaccine, that need the booster, that need a flu shot. Flu shots are still important, folks. We still need to get those. I love the fact that you you saw a gap, you saw an, an opportunity on your end where it's like, okay, wait a second, we can do this and step in and solve this challenge and this problem. And to your point, these are family members that you're going to their house to see them. They are doing things, but yet they don't really have the ability necessarily to go out to those mass vaccine sites or to travel and, and kind of set everything up. So the fact that you're able to take care of our you know citizens who are in need is a huge, huge win for all of us to be able to, to make sure that everyone is safe. And so I just appreciate what you're doing and, and really going out of your way to make sure that people are safe. And while we're there, we'll vaccinate any caregivers in the home as well. So, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we've done four or five people in a household. We're getting grandma and everybody there at the same time. <laughs> hey, do whatever it takes to make exactly. sure that people are safe exactly. and protected. Exactly. Talk about foster care, because uh, I know that this is something you're always looking for foster parents. So talk about foster care. So we, um, we provide uh, services to children in foster care, of course, you know, from birth to, to age 18 or 19, depending on where they're on the program. Um, you know, there are always children that need a safe place. And we are always looking for foster parents that if they have an extra room in their home, maybe they're willing to um, not only open that room, but, but open up their hearts. And, you know, eventually... You know, the, the long-term plan for, for any child receiving foster care services is permanent. and permanency, whether that is being reunited with the family after um, the, the, the interventions and so forth take place that need to happen for them to, to be back with their, with their family or in some sort of kinship care, ultimately adoption, um, if, if there's not a, a viable family member. But, you know, we, we have a lot of, of wonderful children that just need a, a safe, loving household. And it doesn't have to be a two family household or a two parent household. Um, you know, it can, you know, two moms, two dads, a, a single parent, what have you, um, as long as you can uh, pass the background checks and you're willing to go through the training and you have that part to, to help a, a child, to help a teen, um, it's just so rewarding. And we have so many wonderful success stories. So. We're always, always, always looking for those parents, um, those families that, that are willing to uh, provide that nurturing environment for our children. What sort of process, training, if, if I say, hey, this is something that sounds really good, what do those next steps look like in terms of, um, from me raising the hand to me actually stepping in as a foster parent? So we have an online application process so people can go to our website at meriton.org and they initially fill that out. And then we have uh, recruiters and trainers that will do what's called a home study. So they have conversations with you and um, they're, they're looking at, um, you know, not just your immediate environment. Do, do you have a, a, a spare room? And do you have, I know it sounds silly, but do you have running water? And do, do you have all these, these basic necessities? Um, and uh, 
Then there's the background checks, right? We, we need to make sure that we're, we're putting people in, in, in safe homes. And then there's a lot of training. There's um, training on crisis intervention and there's training on CPR and first aid and medication administration and so forth. So it's a couple of months process to go through all of that, the training. It could be a shorter amount of time or it could take longer just depending on um, the person that's going through the program and, and, and their needs. Uh, a lot of our folks work full time, so, so they need to take classes in the evening. Um, and then that gets all approved by the Department of Children's Services. And um, then we try to uh, find a good match for a child that's referred um, to your home. Uh, so I, I don't want people to think about to be a foster parent or to you know, have a, a foster home, that it has to be this, this nuclear mom and dad, right? It, that's, it has to be someone that has a giving, loving heart is willing to go through the training. Um, you don't have to be 50 and have already raised children or anything like that. But I, I think it's important that we get away from those stereotypes of what we think foster parents look like in this world. Yeah, I agree. It, what's been fascinating on mine is I've interviewed quite a few, whether they're teachers or just different professionals as individuals who've been foster parents and in many cases fostered many children. And uh, just when you look at the life transformation, both for them as the foster parent and how they've grown, and then obviously for the youth as well, it's it's tremendous and, and it's extremely heartwarming. Um how many at a given time, how many foster parents? I mean, is there something where you're needing, you know, uh hundreds a few 30 40 uh, like, we, what, what sort of numbers we always have more referrals than we have availability so um you know there there's no magic number or cap you know we we will put anybody through the the, the training and through the home study that that's interesting gotcha so it, it's not like we just need five and we're going to have the need met because unfortunately um there there's always the need and um you know, I'd love to work ourselves out of a job where, where there were no children in foster, you know, in foster care services and, and, and there were no sick people and there were, you know, no people that needed, you know, there, there were no people over 55 that needed employment, right? We also do senior employment, but unfortunately that that's always the case. So we're always, that's an ongoing evergreen. We're always back. Yeah. Talk about the CREA. It's the Coordinated Response to Elder Abuse. And this is something that um, some of your team members have been on in the past talking about this, but I think it's important to talk about. So give a little background on CREA. Well, what's really exciting about Memphis and, um, and our innovation is that we have had this program now for seven years. And it's a collaborative response between several organizations. There's the Family Safety Center. There's Meriton, there's the Community Legal Center, Memphis Area Legal Center, um, the, all the, the different police and, and fire departments and so forth. And we get referrals on um, our four victims of elder abuse. That can be uh, the, uh, financial exploitation, physical abuse, emotional abuse, neglect, um, the whole gamut. And our role is providing that clinical support, whether it's our registered nurse that goes out and does competency assessment, health assessments, our medical director, we, um, we've raised money for emergency housing. Um, the, the victims of elder abuse, so it's a little more complicated when you need to get someone out of that um, environment. It's not as simple as, say, paying for a hotel room, uh, which you can see sometimes in domestic violence. You, you can put the, uh, uh, the victim in a hotel for a few days and get them away from the situation. Well, because we're dealing with um, with seniors that have multiple health issues and, and sometimes they're bed bound and, and they're totally dependent in care, we can't just put them in a hotel. So there's there's a lot more to finding that emergency housing, that emergency piece. So we do that personal care. A lot of times we're um, you know, scrounging for when they go to an emergency housing placement, they need clothes. They, they we need to figure out where their medicines are or get them new medicines, or it might be as simple as we're providing some hourly in-home supports through those services I mentioned earlier, those home and community-based services. We use that grant uh, funding until we can get something more long-term. Sometimes it's a matter of just having that support in the home for that victim of elder abuse a couple of times a week to train the caregiver, maybe it wasn't an intentional neglect, but they didn't understand how to provide the care, or maybe they just needed some respite or some relief. 
So it's really that wraparound services and it's teamwork and it's really exciting. We've actually got national attention and, and myself and Attorney General Weirich were recently quoted in, in, in the Wall Street Journal about elder abuse. So it's kind of neat that we've gotten uh, Memphis and Shelby County on the national map for, um, in my opinion, one of the, the best interventional programs to support victims of elder. That's so exciting yeah. to be part of that. That's awesome. Wrap up with how we can help. I know that you are always looking for good team members. So staffing is a piece of that and spreading yes. the word about job opportunities. Obviously the foster parents, as we mentioned, that's an ongoing need. Um, fundraising is a nonprofit to underwrite your efforts. That's a piece of this. So how can the community help? Uh, well, everything that you said, <laughs> as well as um, we, uh, we are looking to find uh, permanent jobs for people in our senior employment program over the age of 55. So we have this great workforce. So if you are an employer looking to hire people, by all means, uh, get with us. And, and all those links are available on the website. Also, for people over the age of 55 that need to get back into the workforce or maybe have never been in the workforce, you know, we need you as well. We want to enroll you in this program and help you find that, that job that's going to help you, um, you know, continue to be independent. So we're looking for employers, we're looking for participants in that program, we're looking for foster families. We're, um, we have a very similar program with uh, people um, as opposed to foster care for children. We have a similar program for people that are living with either intellectual and developmental disabilities or the disabilities related to aging. We also look for families that are willing to open up their homes and their hearts to a senior or to an adult with intellectual disability. And it's very similar to foster care where you have that extra room and you have someone staying with you and you provide those supports. So we're looking for those. We're looking for direct care staff. Um, we want to remind everybody that if you have concerns about elder abuse to absolutely report that to, to APS. Um, we want to give you your vaccines. Please let us help you um, and, and your family um, achieve that vaccination status. So maybe we can put some of this. So, you know, D, all of the above. Absolutely. <laughs> We're happy to help in any way we can. We're happy to try to find you a, um, uh, find you a job, either with us or with somebody else. So, you know, reach out to us. We're here. Well, when you talk about reaching out to you, where do we go? So mention again, website, phone numbers, where would you direct us to go? Okay, so our website is meriton.org. That's O-R-G, because we're a nonprofit, M-E-R-T, meriton.org. Uh, if you're calling regarding vaccines, the number to call for that is 901-612-2122. Or if you're just not sure, you can always call our main number at 901-766-0600. And Jeanette or one of the other amazing ladies that work here will get you to the right person. Um, and we have lots of different places on the website. You can click for more information or to apply for a job. And if for some reason you click on the wrong spot, we all work real closely together and we will get you to the right person. Well, Melanie Keller, thank you for all you and your amazing team do. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having me, Jeremy.